Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today, that is right, we are doing a robot fusion. We are going to try and fuse Downforce with Slightly Robber. So we're going to take the flexible, almost indestructible nature of Slightly Robber and we're going to apply it to Downforce and see if we can actually get this thing to perform as well as it really should. Because we saw in that last set of fights that it had, this thing if it works and if it can take those blows is going to be very, very impressive. So that's what we're gonna try and do today. We're gonna to try and get this thing uh, in rubber. So what we're going to do, I think, is separate this into two parts. We'll have a top plate out of ABS as uh, we have here, but then we'll have a wedge and body made out of TPU, which is the rubbery stuff uh, that the slightly rubber is made out of. So this thing, or this new wedge is gonna be able to take a hit uh, and survive all of the impacts that this thing is going to take because it's sucking itself to the ground and not moving anywhere. However, before we do that, I do want to answer a question that you guys have and I have as well. How much downforce are we actually getting out of this fan blade? Now, there is one thing that I can think to try right now um, that might give us the answer to this question, and that is to sit the back of Slightly Rubber on something, on some books, and then sit the wedge on a scale and zero everything out and then turn the fan on because that will give us some uh, indication of how much force is being pushed down on the front of the actual uh, wedge here. So the reason this works is because the center of gravity for downforce is quite far back, it's kind of over the wheels a little bit, which is kind of where you want it to be. So that means that when this fan is pushing air up and therefore pushing itself down, what's actually happening is it's getting force around the center of gravity, which is here. So it's actually levering this way and pushing the wedge into the ground, or at least that's the theory anyway. So if we set it up like that and have a gap where the fan is between the book and the scale, it should be able to drag it up and through, and therefore we're going to avoid whatever issue it was last time where I tried running the fan on the scale and wasn't getting any difference. I think it's because um, the air was coming from around the scale. I think that was it. So we're gonna try it this way first. We'll see how we go. I don't know what's actually gonna happen here. Uh, so we're just gonna have a quick look and see because yeah, the fights that this thing has had in the arena show that it gets a lot of downforce, but the actual sitting on the fan, on the scale and testing it showed that it didn't get a lot of downforce. So there is a disparity there and let's see if we can fix that. So there we go, that went very well. Uh, the scale topped out at one point at about 44, 45 grams, uh, which is really good. That was when I allowed the most amount of airflow through the actual fan. That's when that topped out. So uh, for those of you who were saying that I needed to maximize the airflow as much as possible, you might actually be right. Now, I didn't have uh, any real opportunity to uh, measure the suction or down, like actual suction to the ground, because to do that, what I would need to do is find some way of attaching a, um, a force gauge, which you can get, and I would basically need to attach string to the robot at various points, turn the fan on full blast, and try and lift it off the ground with a force gauge, and that force gauge would give me how much suction uh, the actual thing has down to the table. So that would probably be the next thing that I'd need to do, but I don't have a force gauge, and I don't know anybody who has a force gauge. So 
For now, we're stuck with uh, the scale and that test that we did. But like I said, it topped out at about 45 grams, and I'm pretty sure that this battery isn't the freshest thing. Um, you probably did see there as I put the stick all the way up to the absolute limit, it was uh, cutting out a little bit, and I think that might be because the battery isn't great. Um, this is just one of the batteries that was in one of the robots at Melbourne. Uh, so I don't actually know how good that thing is. But it is time to move on and get on with the actual fusion of this thing. Now, to start with, um, I don't want to keep the chassis the same because the chassis, while it is good, uh, it doesn't look as good as it possibly could. So I decided that because we're doing a rubber makeover anyway, we're going to do a full makeover. And that is why I've designed this. This is the new body for downforce, or at least a uh, trial run at the new body for downforce. Obviously, uh, it's going to have an ABS section at the top and then rubber sections down the sides to make the actual outside armor of the thing. Uh, but yeah, first we're gonna have to do a prototype uh, like we've done in the past. So let's take everything out of this guy, put it into the new prototype chassis, make sure that everything fits. And if everything does, it is actually time to get the rubber chassis going. And that is gonna be really cool. And unfortunately, that is all we have time for. Uh, I have had massive, massive issues with uh, my printer that prints TPU and ABS. Uh, so that's basically sucked up most of the time that I was supposed to be spending on building downforce this week. Thankfully, I did manage to get one good TPU print out of it, and that is now in the new version of the downforce chassis. So I'll pop a uh, close up here on screen. Uh, so because my TPU ABS printer was down. It does have a PLA top plate and then it's got the white uh, TPU surround or wedge basically. Uh, so the new other thing is that there is now actually a proper base plate in here. This base plate is literally so that the TPU gets pushed and held outwards at the walls here, which means that it can't flex too far with this in place. It hits that barrier and stops. Whereas if we take that off, the TPU can flex all the way in until it touches the, uh, the fan here, which is not good because uh, that would mean that a significant weapon hit on this side would do some concussive damage to any electronics that are sat in this little well here. And we need to sit electronics in these wells because uh, there is nowhere else for them to go in this chassis. Um, yeah, so there you go. That, that is where we're at with downforce. Um, yeah, I'm, I just, I've just run out of time, unfortunately. I would have liked to have put this thing together properly on camera for you guys, but it's gonna, it takes 
longer for me to put things together on camera than it does for me to just put them together off camera. And I've still got to edit this whole video, uh, which is going to be a thing that needs to happen before it goes out. Um, yeah, so like I said, unfortunately, completely and totally out of time. That is okay. This thing is, uh, I think, around about just on weight. I'm going to do a quick rejig of the electronics just to uh, make everything fit inside the chassis and hopefully cut a little bit of weight out of wires and bits and pieces in there. Um, yeah, and then this should be good to go. So the next time you will see this, hopefully, is in a fight uh, in about two weeks' time when we talk about the ant weights and how they went uh, at next month's, or this month's ARC meet. Yeah, um, so like I said, that's, that's about two weeks away, which means next week should be an Annie Are You OK a Beetle fight. Uh, but then again, I might change this around. We'll see how we go. Uh, in both of the competitions and how they look in the edit and then we might uh, might do them in a different order I don't really know if we'll see how we go. Uh, but yeah, so there you go Hopefully uh, you guys have enjoyed that one. Hope you like the, the new look for downforce I thought it was about time to give it a proper design and a proper shape I'm quite happy with how this came out and how it looks with the uh, the two different colors and how they merge together uh, with the little tabs and everything I think it's looking pretty, quite good. Let me know what you think uh, down in the comments below. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.